One of the common questions we get asked about is the complexities of tuning a car that's going to operate at high altitude, or actually more correctly, over a wide range of altitudes. The reason that this affects the tune of the engine is because as we increase our altitude, the barometric air pressure drops. What this means in turn is that for a given volume of air, there's less oxygen available to the engine. When we're consuming a given volume of air, as the air density drops, what this also means is that the ECU needs to inject less fuel in order to maintain a given air fuel ratio. So there is a little bit of work needed to go on in the background in order to make sure that everything is running perfectly. The other aspect with high altitude is that due to that low air density and the lack of oxygen, it's a given that our engine is going to produce less power. With a turbocharged engine, we actually have the ability to overcome some of that lost power by adjusting our boost pressure relative to altitude. Let's start by talking about how a typical OE manufacturer deals with this varying barometric air pressure. In their case it's actually really simple because the majority of OE cars are fitted with a mass airflow sensor or MAF sensor for short. This sensor sits in the intake stream of the engine and all of the air that enters the cylinders passes through the mass airflow sensor. As its name implies, it directly measures the mass of air entering the engine. So in essence, this actually automatically compensates for the barometric air pressure as the altitude changes. In turn, the factory ECU can do a really good job of maintaining a consistent air fuel ratio regardless of what the altitude and barometric air pressure are doing. In the aftermarket, however, we're much more likely to be using ECUs that operate on the speed density system. The speed density system gets rid of the mass airflow sensor and instead uses a manifold absolute pressure sensor, or MAP sensor for short. This measures the air pressure in the inlet manifold. From here, the ECU uses the ideal gas law to calculate the mass of air entering the cylinders rather than directly measuring it. Because the speed density system is calculating the mass airflow, this does open it up to some inaccuracies, particularly when we are encountering large changes in barometric air pressure. If we want to maintain a consistent tune as the altitude changes, this is going to require an additional input into the ECU in the form of a barometric air pressure sensor. The sensor is fitted to the car and it measures the changing barometric pressure as we go up in altitude. From here, using a compensation table or compensation tables inside the ECU, this allows us to make adjustments to the fuel delivery in order to achieve our air fuel ratio targets. This system using the manifold absolute pressure sensor with a barometric air pressure correction does work, but it's actually a band-aid fix. The ideal or correct solution would be to measure both the manifold absolute pressure as well as the exhaust manifold pressure or the back pressure on the exhaust side of the engine. Using these two sensors we can form what's called the pressure ratio across the engine. And if we're using this type of load input on our main fuel table, then the ECU can essentially completely compensate for changes in barometric pressure automatically. Another aspect that complicates the tuning process is that often at high altitude we'll actually use the turbocharger to try and gain back some of that power we're losing by driving the turbocharger harder. One way we could look at this is to use the turbo to maintain a consistent boost pressure in the inlet manifold as the altitude increases. On paper this should give us a relatively consistent engine power, but in order to do this what we're actually doing is driving the turbocharger harder and harder, or in other words we're driving the turbo at a higher pressure ratio. The pressure ratio is the outlet pressure from the compressor of the turbo divided by the inlet pressure. At sea level, this is typically pretty close to the actual manifold pressure we're running. However, at very high altitude here at Pikes Peak, we're only seeing somewhere in the region of 70 to 75 kPa at the start line, and at the finish line we're only around 60 to 63 kPa. This is much lower than the 101.3 kPa we see at sea level under standard conditions. What this means is that to maintain that constant manifold boost pressure, our pressure ratio from the turbocharger is constantly increasing as we go further and further up the hill. This requires the turbo to work harder and harder. This increases the turbocharger speed and it also increases the back pressure on the exhaust side of the engine.
That turbocharger speed is a critical aspect for us to monitor here because all of the turbochargers we use have a critical speed. If we exceed that, first of all, the turbocharger efficiency is going to massively drop off. This means rather than pumping more air into the engine, it essentially is pumping a lot more heat into the engine. That's not good for power. More importantly though is that if the turbo speed becomes too high, the turbocharger can actually fail. So this is a key element or key parameter for the team and the tuner to monitor in practice and testing. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.